What's up, guys? <clears throat> Tonight, we talk about fear. Fear. So, the last two videos... A little bit of sage. The last two videos... I had fear before I turned on the camera. And... So how do we recognize fear and deal with it? So I'd fear before I turn on the cameras. Now how do I know that that's not a fear that I should listen to? How do I know that that's not like a, a message from my soul to not make the video? Because rationality, well this is the next key, rationality never satisfies the soul. Which is why oftentimes with sensitive women in your life, you may tell them something that rationally makes sense. This happens with men too. More frequently with women. It may make sense practically. And you probably know on a soul level that it's not true. And they definitely know on a soul level that it's not true. So the rationality does not satisfy them. They stay anxious. Or they stay intuitive. They stay strong in their intuition that you're doing something wrong. Or that something's gone on. Because they're feeling it on a soul level. And the soul is not rational. The left brain's rational. So the analytical thought that we've all been coached, the out there world, the, the world of objective scientism, all this stuff, these are rational, but man himself is not rational. Um, he has the, the potential to be rational at, at times, but that's not his, his base, his soul or his base nature, his, his animal nature, so to speak, either is definitely not rational. So... We're not going to be able to satisfy our fear by thinking rationally, right? Because just like you can't prove God or the soul with scientific means, you can't solve a metaphysical problem with a scientific or a rational answer because the two realms don't speak to each other. They have no correspondence or little, co they don't have um, the same essence or the same proof necessary. If you want to prove God, you don't go look in a microscope. So, how do we satisfy the soul? How do we know, what are some tips and tricks to know which fears we should go towards and which fears we should go away, if there are any? For that, there's a few ways to do it. Um, let's think. So how did I know to make the videos anyways, regardless of my fear? Well, first of all, we can we can find we can start to um, create we can how do I say this taxonomize types of fear, meaning categorize them. So the fear I felt before I made the videos was like a jittery excitement, like a little bit of anxiety gets the heart pumping, but you're act but I was actually more excited because I was gaining energy. I was almost entering a small fight or flight state, but you could tell there was an upwelling of energy. I could feel it through my stomach, a little bit jittery, and then it came up into um, into the rest of my being from there. So, on that one, the way that I made sure that it was good with the soul was that I was tapped into uh, my higher self and into my own being. I had gone within before the video in order to decide what I would talk about uh, loosely or to to basically just ask if it was a good idea. And I had used the pendulum in that situation. So I had gained two spiritual means to, um, yeah, the window's closed. I had gained two spiritual means to telling me that the fear that I was having was not something that I should follow in terms of actually manifesting it. Now I'm gonna do a caveat here. I'm kinda just going with these videos as they go. So the caveat here is that God himself does not send through his messengers or through himself or through his vibration does not send fear at all because he doesn't resonate with fear because if God were to begin to fear then he would slip out of meditation so in the same way when you're in your godlike mind in your I am presence in your inner knowing fear is not a natural emanation it's what you could call a demon or a lie or a a mis uh, like a mistake, <laughs> like an abortion. Fear itself, okay, a fear itself is, you have to be careful with the literality of these words, but the <clears throat> fear itself is, um, is like something to be utilized. It's not actually, 
something that comes from reality organically. Hmm. How should I say that? Because it does organically arise in reality. Fear. Like, let's use an extreme example. The fear of a deadly animal or a human trying to kill you. And let's really think about the situation. You don't just need to get out of it by saying, well, if you knew that you were going to live eternally or that you would have another chance at reincarnation, then there would be no fear when you were in that deadly encounter, which is true for a limited amount of humans. Fear. Yeah, that's about it. Fear just arrives with Saturn. That's it. The only planet that has fear is Saturn. So since we're influenced by Saturn, all you have to do is find where Saturn is in your chart. And then once you find where Saturn is in your chart, then you find your fear. Then if you look to any planets that Saturn is touching, in the rest of your chart, then you find your fear. And that can be by any aspect, by conjunction, sextile, trine, opposition, square, quintile, or quin quincunx, in conjunct, semi square, semi trine, semi blah, 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 blah. semi trine's a sextile. So that's where you find your fear. Now we found the fear. Fear emanates from Saturn. It doesn't emanate from the creator. It emanates from one of the creator's creations. So from there, <laughs> we find <clears throat> that we're fearful in the house of Saturn. So for example, the house of Saturn in one's chart could lie in the 10th house. This would show that one has fear of the jungle, of the status of prominence of being shown for who they are in front of the world they may not like to take credit for their achievements they may have fear about that they may have fear of being the face of a company they may have fear of being the leader of an organization they may have in that's in the limelight they may have fear of not being enough in the public eye of not having enough status of not reaching their goals of not manifesting their goals for the world those types of things. And let's say that in that 10th house, it was the, the Saturn placement was in the sign of Taurus. That's what's coming to mind. So if Saturn's in Taurus, then in the 10th house, then they have fears of becoming poor, of not manifesting their desires, of not being fixed, of not manifesting their material desires, of not being fixed in their status, fixed in their role at work, fixed in their perception among society, fixed in their yeah, fixed in their career, fixed in their vocation. They're going to be fearful of all those earthy fixed things, right? And then let's say they have their moon and Scorpio in the fourth house across from Saturn at an opposition. Then there's going to be a, horrif a horrifying parent when they show up, when they grow up in the household, because that's a debilitated moon in Scorpio, the vengeful, martial, aggressive, passive aggressive sign with Pluto overtones, undertones, undertones, <laughs> God of the underworld. So they're also going to have fear over any of their private uh, matters being exposed. So not only are they going to be afraid of being in the career light, but they're going to be afraid that any secrets that happen within their home may get spread around, or they're going to be extremely uh, possessive over and possessive of their time and their home space and their all this, and they'll have fear that that's going to be um, seen or taken away from them. They'll have fear that loved ones or other people that are inside of their home, in their home life, are um, plotting against them. 
they'll become paranoid. They'll have fear that their um, home is not in a safe space or that they're, yeah, all kinds of fears around the home, right? So now we've just nailed two aspects. Now say they have a trine. Now this is going to be a tough one for me because this is a po technically a positive aspect. Let's say they have a trine in Virgo and Virgo would then be their second house, right? Yep. So then they have a second house Virgo. They're Leo ascendant. Second house Virgo with a trine to Saturn and what's in Virgo? Let's say the sun's in Virgo. So now they've got a sun trine Saturn. Now this is where there's not going to be as much fear because it's a trine so the other aspects of Saturn will be playing in like discipline and um, which will play on the other aspects but to a lesser degree compared to the fear and restraint but they'll have discipline focus um, long-term staying power they'll yeah have all these things but where will the fear arise there the fear will like likely be psychological it'll likely be because it'll be their value system it's going to be a uh, second house's value system their fear is likely going to be virgo second house sun their fear is going to be the analyst the harsh criticism of others because that's what a virgo does to themselves and to other people but whatever you do to yourself is what you do to other people it's projection you can only project from what you have on the projector then onto the screen which is the other person so they're gonna be afraid of harsh criticism of others of not having their facts straight of looking like a mess all that stuff and they'll have some purity complex or um, fear over either being the whore or the virgin either way all right so there's fear from an astrological perspective we just broke that down so what else can I tell them about fear what else can we tell them? Fear, fear, fear. So how do we assuage that? We just talked about all that fear. Okay. So, oh okay, yeah, that's, that's all it is. So all the fear is basically where you need to grow, right? So fear of me making a video, to take it back to the beginning. I got a fear of making a video, but I already know I need to make the video. Because in other points of my astrology, that's shown. For example, I'll give you a couple. My midheaven is in Virgo, which is someone who's analytical, mercurial. They have the ability to speak. Um, and then the midheaven shows public or career, right? And they have the ability to analyze, to talk about health, which I'm talking about a juice fast, all that shit, right? And that happens to be my 11th house of groups, so which is the natural Aquarius house. Aquarius and the 11th house talk about friend groups, large groups and associations. So my subscribers and stuff are an 11th house topic. Or anybody that watches this video is then a group that's taking the content. And if you know that that's in my 11th house, then you'll know my 10th house is Leo. 10th house Leo is about performing, being the center of attention, so I'm making a video. So that's my 10th and 11th house. Boom, boom. And then if you look at my Mars and Mercury, they're in Gemini. So that's someone who's good at um, pattern recognition, distilling concepts, or I uh, think musing on concepts, and then speaking about them. So basically what I'm saying is, I can prove it a third way, astrologically, that it was good to make the videos. So I knew it was good to make the videos on a soul level. Higher self's literally telling me, yeah, make the videos. So I sit, to front to, I sit in front of the camera to make the video and I get fear, right? And it's kind of nervous excitement fear. Well, where's my Saturn? My Saturn is in the sixth house of Aries. This is all in whole sign astrology. If you want to do Placidus, it's in the fifth house, but we'll stick with whole sign. So Saturn is in the sixth house of Aries. Aries is about beginning new tasks, being an inspiration, um, having the forward ram-headed ability to strive for something, to push through obstacles, right? So that was being tested. And remember, the light bulb went out on the first video. So that's Saturn and Aries saying, are you going to begin this venture, or can I just knock a light bulb out, and then you're going to stop, you're going to quit and give up. You see what I mean? If you have Saturn and Aries, which is everybody in my couple years of generation, even my sister who's two years younger, has the same placement because my Saturn's at the beginning of Aries. And it's retrograde, so it's gonna be internal. Any retrograde will turn it internal. So internally, I'm fearing about starting a new campaign, being a leader, starting a new opportunity, starting a new venture of passion and of mysticism. Fire rules mysticism. So that's re receiving inspiration from God. That's fire, that's imagery, that's having a vision. So I have a vision that I'm gonna make the video, that I'm gonna be a leader, that I'm gonna fulfill my destiny. And then Saturn says, okay, 
you're about to set off on a path, now I'm gonna throw fear and, and all kinds of obstacles so that you can learn and get over it and then become the leader you're supposed to be. It's not a, an oppressive bad thing unless you let it be. So I get the fear, I say, all right, I'm gonna push through the fear because it's Saturn, it's a, it's, a, it's a fella, he's a dude that I can be friends with and get over it with. He's trying to show me something here. So whether in past lives, whether in this life, whether whatever, situation I chose to come here with Saturn and Aries so I'm gonna have obstacles to being a leader obstacles to going for my desires obstacles to starting new campaigns obstacles to creativity and um, yeah passion so with this same breakdown you can find Saturn in your chart you look at the sign you look at the house and then sixth house is the house of work and of daily routine so Tonight, now it's three hours later than the last two nights I made videos because I fell asleep during a meditation, right? So that was Saturn saying, well, you're on a different routine now, which is the sixth house. Now, are you still going to make a video for that third night? Or am I going to throw off your routine and you're not going to make the video, right? So he threw another, it wasn't even fear this time, but he threw a, a restriction. So I guess this video is about Saturn now that we talk about it. <laughs> but I thought it was going to be all about fear. Same difference, really. I mean, maybe Pluto can evoke some fear, but not really. It kind of makes you feel like a god. So, um, <laughs> so K2, fear, no. K2 just makes you not want to do stuff. All right. Yeah. So I think that helped a lot. So where you receive the fear is actually where you need to grow, and it can be one of your greatest strengths as you continue in life. I'm going to show you guys two things, if you stayed around as a bonus. <clears throat> It's not caffeinated coffee, fellas and females. This is bio coffee. I don't, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. Just thought I'd show you this. Supposedly, it's an alkaline coffee. Now, remember, you don't need any of this if you're an optimized human. If you're growing your own fruits and veggies, you don't need to supplement anything. Your body will take care of it all. But we don't live in those circumstances. So this is bio coffee. You can buy it on Amazon. It's made with four ingredients, and it has three servings of wheatgrass. Right? No, um, it's not the best thing for you, but it's helped me get through the fast because I'm on day 20 now. So, bio coffee. Now, ashwagandha, this is one I can swear by. I've been taking this now for a few months. I took one month off, but probably five or six months total of ashwagandha. This completely gets your nervous system and your, um, what do you call those? Hormones, chemicals running smooth. Like, for example, I'm driving down the street, a squirrel runs in front of the car. Usually, my heart would begin to pound, right? I'd be like, oh shit, about to hit a squirrel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You take this stuff, you're like, squirrels running across, your mind, squirrels running across the road, no need to fear. Hit the brakes, your heart doesn't start pumping. So you don't flush those shitty adrenal chemicals into your body, right? Ashwagandha, go for that. That's an Indian herb, and it's a root. I've actually grown that myself on a farm, but didn't end up harvesting it. Then, lion's mane shrooms. Beautiful for, it's a, it's a nootropic. Beautiful for brain, also for memory. Anyways, thought I'd show you some of those. What else can I show you? I wanna offer value here. So let me show you something. What can I show them by yourself? I feel like I need to show you guys something here. Show them a book. They say, which book? Which book? Which book? Read them a Bible verse. All right. I'm going to read them a Bible verse. All right. Take me to the right page. Let's open it to a page here. Boom. Isaiah 90, 65. Hmm, what do I read to them? 
We're going out on a limb here, y'all. Don't be afraid if you switch out of this video. I won't hold it to you. Oh, well, there you go. Behavior on the Sabbath. It's Saturday. And Jesus answering them said, this is Luke 6, verse 3. And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this, what David did when himself was an hungered, and they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the shrew bread, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful to eat but for the priests alone? And he said unto them, That the Son of the of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into, a syn into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him. His right hand was withered probably means, sorry to jump in, but it probably means that he was not on the right hand path. That he was, um, yeah, he was using his left brain. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up, and stand forth in the midst. And he arose, and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good, or to do evil, to save life, or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another that they might, what they might do to Jesus. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to teach you this too. Monday is moon day. Tuesday, or in Spanish, martes, martes, is Mars day. Wednesday, miércoles, miércoles, is Mercury. Thursday, or jueves, is Jupiter. Friday, or viernes, is Venus. And finally, the last two, Saturn Day, which we've just entered now, which I just made a video on Saturn, didn't even think about it, is Saturn Day. And Sunday is Sunday, the day of the sun. So remember that. And the Sabbath is Saturn Day. It, it's rest, constraint, doing good works, long-term vision. So time to rest today. I hope you don't have work. I happen to have work coming up, but I'm going to take it easy. And then on Sunday, you're supposed to get together with family and begin your week. Start to do some planting, start to do some all kinds of activities do the godly work all right that's been subverted but don't worry about it we're gonna we're gonna set it back up love you guys here's a piece of amethyst this is a stone of saturn purple purple is one of the mystical colors of saturn i got a purple bracelet so we're saturned out tonight all right love you guys wish you the best peace out